What's up, y'all? This is Britt Jones with Throwback Country Music. I am so excited. Sitting to my right is the one and only, she's been on the show before, Allie Colleen. Hello. Thank you for hanging out with us Honor. backstage at 3rd and Lindsley. It's my first time being at this uh, venue. Really? Yeah, so I'm excited. This is a great one. I was just telling, um, we were just talking about this venue, and there's a lot of venues in this town that sound really, really good. Mm -hmm. There's a lesser amount of venues in this town that sound really, really good on stage, like for us. You yeah. know what I mean? And this is a stage that I always love playing because it sounds good for us. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, that's yeah. always a big a positive. Just heard you do a little sound check, and uh, what song was that? It's called Break. Mm, that was beautiful. You like it? Yeah, your Thank vocals you. are just like... It's a conversation between like two wild horses. It's kind of like if like me and my girlfriends were all wild horses and like a cowboy came to get one of them, we'd all take bets like on how long before he like brought her back to the pasture. You know what I mean? Like you can't break that one, dog. That's so a it's great... just it's all about it's a conversation between wild horses of like they don't want what they can't break. Like oh. there's nothing wrong with you because he let you go. Like they don't want what they can't break. Like don't worry about it. Oh, that's cool. Pretty rad, right? Yeah, Thank yeah. You. Your ideas are your ideas are really good. Thank Actually, you. we're going to get into the new single, but before that, you're talking about wild horses. You have a passion for horses. I do. Yeah. So how many do you own? I have two horses. Two horses. I've got Jack and Einstein. Oh, They're nice. exactly what you think. Jack is a dream. He's super sweet, lazy, blonde. Mm. Einstein is smarter than me and a pain in every part of my body. <laughs> yes. So he knows what to do, but he don't do it. He's smarter than I am. Ah, that's a problem, to that's be honest. Awesome. I don't like that. Um, are you a cat, dog person? I'm a dog person. Dog, me too. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Um, well, cool. So you have a brand new song out. It came out in May. Um, and I was listening to it a few times over and over, actually, on the way up to Nashville today. Yes. Uh, Grass on the Grave. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how that came together. I read some of the story, but I want our listeners to, to hear how special that song has actually become ever, you know, since right now. I love, I love Grass on the Grave. I think Grass on the Grave was definitely, so it was a title that I brought to the right. And I said, hey, guys, like, there's a very obvious way I feel like to write this song you know mm -hmm. what I mean there's a very like contemporary country way to write this song we're gonna write it the alley way today if that's okay like just in the sense of it's like I don't think I realized how many things take true like grief you mm -hmm. know what I mean like I thought losing somebody took grief in the mm -hmm. sense of like losing somebody forever like a death or a passing mm -hmm. was something that was really grief but since 2020 I feel like I've been in a state of grief the whole time whether it's a state of grief of just like a way that I used to think Mm -hmm. you know, that I don't think anymore. Mm -hmm. um, letting go of things that maybe even mindsets, right? Like something's supposed to be this kind of way, and if mm -hmm. it's not this kind of way, it's not right. right. And I feel like there's so many things that we attach ourselves to. And Grass in the Grave just gives you a space to both delicately and very, like, frustratedly process that mm. grief spot you know what i mean and mm -hmm. it just it just comes out of kind of like the verses are very sentimental and very much like what you would think a grief song would be and the chorus is very much like gosh darn it you mm. know what i mean like and I'm, I'm very very proud of the song and it's, it's created a lot of rooms i feel like for a lot of different people to sit in which i'm very proud of oh i love that i love the uh the production on it was, was thank you to me though it, it sounded a little uh a little different than what i've heard you uh, already do mm -hmm. uh but you've got several songs that you know i the good yeah. thing about Allie is that she's not pigeonholed into one style. I mean, this mm -hmm. is a, I don't know, it's a, I'm not even sure what to say, but it is it is different than uh, like mm -hmm. some of the other stuff that so I've listened I to. So I grew up on, um, I really did. I grew up on like Christina Aguilera and Avril and Nickelback and Evanescence and mm. Fall Out Boy and like Miley Cyrus, not Hannah Montana, but Miley Cyrus. Yeah. <laughs> but Hannah Montana for a while and then Miley Cyrus and that kind of thing. So it's like I love the pop punk world that came out of like the late 90s early 2000s in mm -hmm. like the pop world right like even mm -hmm. everlife just those cute like pop punk like bands mm -hmm. and that's my thing like that's what i love mm -hmm. and if i can attach a country narrative to that in the sense of if i can write a song that has characters right and and story growth and all of that kind of stuff and it sound like fallout boy that's the coolest thing on the planet for me that's awesome um and i feel like the closest thing we ever got to that sonically was Halos and Horns, which is a mm -hmm, song that I that's put a great out, song. and I love it. And so ever since Halos and Horns, everything has been geared mm -hmm. that kind of in that way. So we uh, we just finished working on an EP, and everything follows. And Grass in the Grave is the first release of the EP. So everything oh. sonically is very much like. So that. there is an EP coming mm -hmm. out. Oh, that's awesome! Will everything is sonically very much like that. Twenty four this year. Um, I'm thinking it will be fall. Yes. Okay. Um, so we're gonna put it out this year. We have been playing a song on the road for years. Um, that's called Rolling Stone. 
and then if it had a parenthesis title, it'd be Sincerely. You know what I mean? Mm. And so the EP is called Sincerely. Oh, um, well, nice. And okay. so I'm very, very excited to put out this EP. And the last album that we put out, I felt like I worked really hard to write a bunch of rooms for people to live in that they mm. needed, you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, and this time I took I took time to write five songs to really really tell people who Allie is and kind of like mm. what my world looks like and that kind of thing. So I don't know that it's very commercial, but I'm very excited to put this project out. The beautiful thing about you, Allie, and I, I, I knew this when I first interviewed you, I think it was back in November, is that the true artists, the way that you just described that, that album that came out in, was it 2020? Mm-hmm. How you wrote the songs for a space for certain people to live through and to be like encouraged by, you know, yeah. You really take time and and really uh, pursue that. Uh, that's just that's awesome to hear you explain that that each song was like a room for people to. That's what somebody did for me. You know what uh, I mean? Like growing up, I fell in love with songs that mm-hmm. gave me three minutes to feel a type of way, and mm-hmm. I didn't have to explain to somebody mm-hmm. else. You know, and mm-hmm. and I didn't have to, and I also didn't even have to put myself in it. It's almost like I could feed off of somebody else's sadness for a minute, so oh, yeah. I didn't have to be. You know, kind right. of thing. And so I grew up living in rooms like that. I grew up having songs that created safe spaces for me. And so the only reason that I would even know or think to do that now is because somebody did it for me. That's powerful. And so with this new EP, they're going to people, especially your fans who are diehard Mm -hmm. uh, followers of you, uh, especially on social media, they're going to get to see a little peek of who Allie is. This is the first time I've 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 written a project that lets you come into my room, okay. and I'm very scared of that. Vul- vulnerable. I don't let is, people into my yeah, room. Yeah. Right. Um, one, I know where everything is. What if you yeah. come in and move something? You know yeah. What I mean, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> no. Oh. So I'm I'm a little nervous, um, but I'm very excited. Also, it's it's funny as an artist who who loves to live, you know, in the spotlight and do the thing. It's like. Allie Colleen isn't about Allie, yeah. you know, which is very comfortable for me. Like, right. Allie Colleen isn't about Allie, and this project is about Allie, so it's a little mm. spooky. Um, but I think it's that next level of connection to that, that, you know, myself and fans both desire, because as much as I love all the artists I love right now, there mm-hmm. aren't a lot of artists right now that I feel like I personally know a thing about. Right. And part of me loves that, right? Yeah. I don't yeah. care. Do your thing. Like, yeah. I want to love your music. That's it. Mm-hmm. And the other part of me is like... What do you do on your weekends? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, not yeah. even what do you do, like, what do you think about on yeah. your weekends? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that this EP really lets people into maybe what I think about. I just thought of something as you were saying that. Um, when you were on the show, it was the week or the two nights after CMA Awards and Lainey won Entertainer. And I remember you saying <laughs> you cried and just went so excited. She won the daggum thing again the other night, Allie. <laughs> no. What in the world? She's, I mean, that's awesome. But you... <laughs> I know. No, it's just, it's incredible watching somebody be absolutely nothing but themselves and be rewarded for mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I feel like as an artist, I watch a lot of people be something that they're wanted, that, like, that they're expected to be and be mm-hmm. rewarded for it. Mm-hmm. And I think that that takes an incredible character. Mm-hmm. And I think it takes a lot of work. And I think it's admirable. But I don't know, I don't know what they get to take with them to go to sleep at night. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And Lainey just goes to sleep at night. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean? in my brain, I don't know yeah, Lainey, yeah. so I don't, I don't know what her world is like in her brain. But to me, that woman wakes up and goes to sleep, Lainey, and I mm-hmm. just think that, and that's what I want to do. And I mm-hmm. think that that's been a big encouragement for me is seeing artists like her and Ashley McBride, um, <clears throat> and Hunter Girl, and just friends of mine just be themselves and finally be seen for it. And I'm mm. like, well, gosh darn it, if it takes me 20 extra years to be seen, I don't care as long as when I am seen, it's as Allie. That's big. So, that's why kind of going forward now, that's what we're working on project-wise is Alley stuff. I love that. It's spooky. I don't mm. I don't think I do. <laughs> I, I, think think pay, I, do. I think the payoff is going to be <laughs> going to be bigger than what you expect. But it's it's I understand it's, it, it can be uncomfortable, especially to be vulnerable to so many mm-hmm. people listening to yeah. what you put down on paper. Yeah. What's the uh, writing process like for this new EP? The co-writes? Or, or do you stick with some of the same co-writers? Or? I really do. I, I stuck with my people, and mm. I think that that's a huge part of it. Um, a lot of it are the writers of Halos and Horns, so that's Eric mm. Dodd and Stephen Huntley. And mm-hmm. Eric Dodd wrote probably four or five of the songs on the yeah. Stone album. He's George we, Boy, we've been right? Writing forever, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's awesome. And, and then Stephen, opposite, he's a Knoxville boy, so okay. Stephen's Knoxville, and then yeah, and then, uh, yeah Eric Georgia. And so I wrote a lot with them, and then I wrote, I wrote a lot. I, two of them came from like a retreat with just like girlfriends of mine. Which was very personal. Like a songwriter so, retreat? Yeah, like a songwriter oh, nice. retreat with girlfriends of mine. So that kind yeah. of dove into my personal life and kind of mm. went into that kind of thing. And so a lot of it, the writing part was uncomfortable, which mm. I've, I haven't experienced before because mm-hmm. when I write about myself, I write by myself. You know right. what I mean? Like, And so all of it's been uncomfortable. 
and it's been I think the most rewarding project yet. Any tears shed through the process of like writing, like getting that vulnerable? Or Dog, is it just... I cried on the way here. <laughs> I cry all the time. <laughs> I do. I cry. I can't wear bottom mascara if I cry. Like absolutely not. No, I cried on the way here. But I will tell you something that's not super normal for me. I laughed a lot. Ah. Uh, writing this album. Really? Yeah. I was crying at the same time, but okay. I laughed a lot. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I got to, I got to experience emotions with people, and I don't feel like I do that a lot. I feel like I work really hard to mm. kind of be like, I know what emotions I'm gonna evoke from you guys. Like I already know. You're fine. You're not bamboozled. I was bamboozled writing mm. this a lot, and mm. I'm I'm grateful for that. I think. Man, that's. This that you describing the past fifteen minutes describing this the way this whole process of this new EP makes me want to listen to it, like you know what I mean. You you yes! sold me. That's the point. But yeah, just knowing that you've uh, oh. poured your heart into it, I, I, I really can't wait to hear a little more about Ally through these songs. Oh, that makes me excited. It also makes me anxious. That makes yeah. me hope that you like it. Oh, I will. Mm -hmm. I will. Um, while we're still friends, this came out after I talked to you the last time. So uh, I love the song. Thank you. Uh, with the one and only Lee Bryce, and you also toured with Lee. Yeah. So. That was incredible. Yeah. We So I sat down to write this song with Lee and his wife, Sarah, um, and Miss Sarah Bryce and I, like, she wrote Stones, which is a title track for the last yeah. album. Like, okay. She's wrote Wallflower with me. Yeah. Um, all, most of, like, my staple Alley stuff Sarah's oh, nice. been a part of. Okay. Um, so we finally honestly just invited Lee. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're like, hey, we do really well, so we don't know if we want you here, but you can come on in. And he crushed it, as always. Um, While We're Still Friends kicked my butt because Lee had the title. And I was trying to be all impressive. I was trying to impress Lee and, mm -hmm. I, you know, be the cool kid. And he was like, I have this title. It's called While We're Still Friends. And I said, oh, I get it. And he goes, do you? I said, yeah. Like, hey, like, while we're still friends and, like, while we're buddies, let's see if we love each other. Like, let's try this, mm -hmm. right? Like, let's date. Like, and then, you know, maybe it won't be. And he goes... No, it's so, <laughs> that's so far from what it is. He's like, it's while we're still friends. Let's, let's break up. Like, yeah. you know, like yeah. while we still love that's, each other, let's do this. And powerful. I was like, and I was like, have you been yeah. in my brain? What are you doing? And at the time I was in a beautiful relationship. Yeah. I was an absolute beautiful relationship. And I wrote this song with Lee and Sarah in February, uh, February 21st, I think of 21. Oh, okay. And um, went home that day and had the conversation with my husband of mm -hmm. exactly what the song is. Like, oh, hey, wow. I love you and you love me and, like, this isn't going where we wanted it to. And, mm. and we both have a lot of pride in the mm -hmm. promises that we made and the vows that we made. And I want to see you have a great rest of your life. And I also want to, too. So, like, while we're still friends, how about we talk about this? And God, it please. absolutely that's killed me. Mm -hmm. And so that's also why it took us two or three years to put it out because I wasn't going to put it out mm -hmm. while that was my world. Mm -hmm. right. Out of respect for me and my partner. And so that's also where Grass in the Grave, you know, comes mm -hmm. from. It's kind of the sequel of that. And I've also told my friends, this town's so wild because it's like, you know, if you break up or you get a divorce or whatever, your friends, the first question is, hey, you good? And the next question is, so do you have any, like, song titles or, like, hooks yet? And I'm like, gosh darn it, you guys, we're not doing this. So I had a lot of friends reach out. I said, guys, we're not doing a divorce album. We yeah. get two songs. We get two songs. That's it. And now I've used them, so we're done. I, oh. I used my two songs, so. <laughs> do you think that uh, While We're Still Friends may have kind of broke the ice for this new side of Alley, this EP? I think that it did, because as beautifully sonically as it was, very much like Wildflower and all of this more sweet singer songwriter powerful vocalist stuff that we've been doing it also has that whole end last chorus that's just kind of ripping and kind of grungy and kind of mm. tough mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i think that that really sets up what grass in the grave did vocally as well and all the electric guitars in it and stuff um there is a guitar solo in one of these songs on the ep that i can't see and i don't know if that makes sense to you but mm. you know like when you hear even a vocal riff or a guitar riff, and like mm -hmm. you can see the ball hitting all the little things, yes. right, as it's going down. I can't on this one. And I'm going to have to find a player to go on the road with me that mm. can play it. Because the studio musician's like, I'm not let on the road. And I'm like, you can't drop a solo yeah. like that on a song <laughs> and expect anyone else to play oh, it. That's man. insane. Yeah. So I cannot wait. That's... I can't wait for the performance of this album, and I also uh. can't wait for the release of it um, for people to spend time with on their own. That's exciting. Yeah. That really is exciting. I'm very excited. Uh, do you have a part in producing? Yes. Um, yeah. So I picked everybody. I handpicked every musician on the project um, because they were all on previous projects of mine mm. um, and handpicked all of them. Um, really sat with my producer for a very long time on all of it. Um, 
and and really got to sit in that chair for a little while and it was it was and and i'm so proud of everyone that i've worked with in the past because it wasn't for joe costa who produced stones um and ben and jared neiman and lee bryce who produced everything if it wasn't for being the small little ant in a room for years who mm. got to watch these guys work mm -hmm. and do their thing i wouldn't have been able to go into this project mm -hmm. with like the knowledge and intention that i did on what i wanted it to sound like so mm. Um, that's always just the biggest encouragement I can give to anyone in this town is be the ant for a little while. Like, I think it's very normal that's for great. people to come to this town and think, I have to prove myself. I have to be big. I have to be the yeah. biggest one in the room. Yeah. Come to this town and be the small guy mm -hmm. in the room for a little while. Because, mm -hmm. one, all you're going to do is learn mm -hmm. and maybe impress someone. You right. know what I mean? Right. Like, heck yeah. So I've been doing that for years. I've been the ant for a little while, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty ready to, to get to show, you know, what we've been working on. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Um couple more things so june 29th you're playing at the keith whitley memorial bike ride yeah guess who's the mc is it you it's me but yeah no. <laughs> just, i'll be there <laughs> Je i know jesse called me this week and said you know what Bruce, let's why don't you just do the mc because I'm, yeah. I'm putting together all the slides and all that and so i said uh well i'm interviewing ali uh, thursday he goes no way so That's you'll perfect. be there You'll be putting on a That's show. That's going to be a really cool night. I'm really excited about it. Me too. I mean, just looking at looking at the lineup of it, looking at the rounds too of, mm -hmm. of you know of just guys that are going to acoustically play Keith stuff. I think that that's incredible. Um, getting to do full band stuff, and getting to do Lori stuff is absolutely incredible and a yeah. huge honor. Um, so I'm very excited. Yeah. I love Hannah Dasher. Right. Me I love too. Hannah Dasher. So she's going to be there. Oh. So who cares? <laughs> I, I, I want to go hang out in her kitchen. She, I think, I have a lot of things in my life that I'm very, like, proud of and, yeah. like, I'll flex on. But the fact that Hannah made me a birthday cake one year is, I think, one of my things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh. I, I love the retro yeah. throwback, all that yeah. stuff. I'm excited to see her. Jesse talks really highly of her. I love Hannah. Oh, I love man. Hannah. She's, yeah. she's been very, very kind to me. Yeah. Always. That's awesome to hear. I, I, man, she's, she's so good. Mm -hmm. um, and then, this past weekend, I was at June Jam doing all these cool backstage interviews, and we were asking artists these fun questions here's my fun question for you in the history of all music albums don't be country pop whatever if you could have been a fly on the wall for one historical album to be made to see that process what do you think i'm pretty sure artist. that this is the title track of the album but i could be wrong but i would say thriller mm, that Michael is Jackson, the title track sure. yeah absolutely yeah to see how he put absolutely. it together I mean, how do you... Just to be there. Yeah. Just to see what they just... ordered for lunch, dog. Like, <laughs> who cares? Like, just to be around? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I can't imagine. I can't imagine that. Um, and then I would also have to say, um, I would love to see how Ashley McBride does her vocals. Good like, Lord. how she does her vocal takes and, like, how she does, mm -hmm. like, her booth. Like, if she... And then I didn't know this. I So when I go in for a tracking day... I sing every single time the band plays. If the band plays, I'm singing. Like okay. I'll, I'll do live vocals all day long. Okay. And even if overdubbings, if you want it. Like yeah. If I feel like your electric guitar needs to feed off of mm -hmm. an emotional vocal, then I'm going to sing along with you. I just I learned in the last year just by someone being like, are you like, are you really going back in there singing? You don't have to do it. Like The band's got the stuff. Like Most people don't do this because I think he was just tired of like running my mic all day and like getting it out of the room. Um, that people don't do that. And so that made me, I don't know that I'd never really thought about it before, how other people do their vocal process, mm. but now I want to see how Ashley does it. Mm -hmm. I think it would be so cool because her, her final, like her master has come out so intentional vocally for me, like how she's saying it. And I just wonder if that's, if, if she's a, you know, a one take one freaking take, yeah. person or if she really comped by syllable or if she comped by word or what, but I think that would be an incredible thing to do a lot, you know, in, in the present day would be Ashley McBride, but anything that Michael's ever worked on, mm -hmm. I would call me that's, a fly. That's, that's, that's me. Cool. I would want to be there. Okay. Okay. I like, I told What's her yours? the highwayman, the highwayman <laughs> album. Yeah. I like that. You're like, I got it. Don't worry. <laughs> that it, any sp the one yeah, that yeah. came out in 85 mm -hmm. or 84, it was just called, that album was just called the highwayman mm -hmm. or the high, yeah. And it was, uh, of course, all four of them. I just want to just be in the room That's with freaking them. sick. Yeah. I have a, a song that I wrote that I have pitched to an artist who has promised me they will collab on it. I can't tell you. Who knows if it will ever happen, but they've said that they would. And it's called It's Our Turn. And it's about, like, people, like, kind of me. Like, it's, it's mm. our turn. Like, in our, like in the music industry, like, it's our turn. Like, mm -hmm. It's our turn to do this. And the opening line is, um, like, the highway men said to hell with that, paved their own road, never came back kind of thing. And it just, like, features off of, like, those outlaws. They that did. just did it. You they know did. what I mean? And just, yeah. like unapologetically did it yeah um 
And so that's very cool. I that's a very cool. That would be absolutely insane to see how they yeah. did that. And to, yeah. And I, just those, just them in one room. God, could you? Like I just, said, just lunch would be hey, insane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just ate the crumbs, <laughs> Johnny. Yeah, for real. <laughs> oh man, Allie, you're a dog. You're awesome. You're you're such a. I just, I have. I, I, I'm not just saying this, but these this past few minutes, I have been sold on you because of what you said about your new EP. Thank you. I'm not joking. And because uh, you can see, you can tell, mm-hmm. you can see my eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll send it to you. I'll I'm, drop box it to you. Drop hey, that. If you want drop it. it. You can have it. It's, uh, <laughs> I'll send it to you. I'm sold. And now I'm going to, I'm going to promote the shit out of it. Please. Because of, I, I just got That's sold on it. So, I um, and I don't tell everybody that. Do I saw you? Well, it's on tape now. Everyone, we all heard it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Allie. You're thank awesome. You. And um, y'all be on the lookout for later this year for the EP that's going to tell so much more about Sincerely. this person. Yeah, and she's mm-hmm. awesome. She's got a, and I'll be dropping off her links. She's uh, active on TikTok and Instagram. Are you still cooking any? Are you, you know, are you not, you're not cooking any, or makeup? Makeup. Makeup. Yes. Cooking. Mm-hmm. You're like, mm-hmm. I was what? like, I was like, I was like, I mean, I put what I eat on my story all the time, dog. I mean, I'm pretty oh. sure there's a parfait on there right oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So makeup, makeup. <laughs> makeup, yeah. yes. Yeah. I do creepy makeup. Um, and I, so July's coming up. And so Oct- all, all October I do Halloween content, but July I do like spooky content because it's, it's, really it's my birthday good. month. So we'll be doing cosplays um, July, you guys. So follow me on Instagram. Awesome. We get ready on Facebook Live. We post it on Instagram. We post it on TikTok. Yeah, so. awesome. Take care, Allie, and uh, y'all go check her out.